Hello everyone, welcome back to VTV Sikshanam program. Myself, Professor Nitin Kumar. So in this particular video of mobile application development, I will be explaining on SQLite and how to create a DBA helper class. So what is SQLite? What is SQL? Firstly, you must know what is SQL. SQL means a structured query language. So SQLite is a simple, lightweighted databases which will be used in the mobile application development. So in mobile application development with respect to database, we have three options. One is online Firebase you can use without doing anything, without designing the database, you can make use of online Firebase. Another one, next one is SQLite. It's a lightweight, so it's a, it will be present in the Android today itself. So the next one, if you want to develop if you want to use the advanced features in database management system, then you can go with the room database. These are the three possibilities that we have with respect to databases. What is data? Piece of information. What is database? How that information has been arranged, either it is structured or unstructured, how it has been arranged in the form of a table, that's what we call database management system. With respect to database management, we have these three options. Out of these three options, Firebase, it's completely online. Room database, it's complicated. So in this class, I'm going to explain the SQLite database. It's a structured query language, lightweighted database, which is open source, which is open source and which makes use of relational databases. So if you know MySQL, if you have learned DBMS management system, database management system as a subject, then the similar manner you can develop the mobile application using the SQLite database. It is nowhere different than the MySQL. That's why I have selected this out of these three. Why? Because this one you can do it in the online. This one is complicated which is not a, it's an object oriented database management system. So this one is the one which is suitable for the student learners. Okay. So SQLite is open source and which makes use of relative databases. So in this particular application with respect to SQLite you have to uh, so whether you are going to give complex, you are going to give complex queries or whether you are going to use the complex features secondary, the first common feature that you have to use is create a table. This is the hierarchy that you are going to follow. Firstly, you have to call a method called create a table. Before calling this method, firstly, you must know this is my application. So application will be having two things. One is activity, design. So in this activity, you cannot directly invoke the database. You cannot directly call the queries. That's why you have to create a DBA helper class. And this DBA helper class should be embedded in the Java part of activity. So from which this design is going to get the logic. This is the working procedure of database management system, how the database management can be used in the mobile application development. This is complete application. We'll be having three parts. DBA class, database helper class, will be in touch with the Java part. Java part is responsible for the log providing the logic to the design part. So coming to the methods that we are going to generally use in the database, first one create table, create the table by providing the unique name. Another one on upgrade. So if the table duplicate is exist, in that case it's going to drop the table. Such tables will be dropped. Next basic four operations, first one is insert data if you want to insert data to the database then we are going to call this method insert data next if you want to update the inserted data then update data then if you want to delete the inserted data then you will going to call a method called delete data then if you want to view the data that has been inserted then you are going to call inbuilt method by name get data these are the six methods you must know before using the sqlite database First one is to create the table, second one is to upgrade the table, third one is to insert the data when you are inserting the user information, update data when you want to update the information of user, 
delete data and get data. How this database works? Directly you cannot use the database in the Java part. Instead of that you have to create a helper class. That helper class should be accessed using the Java part which in turn helps the design part, part to execute the logic. This is a complete flow with respect to the database usage in the mobile application development. So in this particular session I am going to develop a mobile application. So simple mobile application uh, to make use of database. So this is the design requirement. This is the design requirement. So the application name is database application where I am going to use the table with only three details. Why? Because uh, I am not, uh, not going to make the application development more complex. The first detail the user has to enter the name of the user, name of the student. Next, mobile number should be entered. The user mobile number should be given. The last one, date of birth will be obtained. Then, I am going to read, provide 3D by 4 buttons here. One is for insert, other one is for update, other one is for delete, other one is for view. This is my design that I am going to design to demonstrate the database ap uh, application using DBA helper class which uses SQLite database. So this is my design. So firstly one title for text view for the, I am going to use constraint layout. I am going to use the constraint layout. So, text view for title, for this I am going to use the text view. Next, two plain text are edit text for, sorry, three plain text are edit text for name, date, mobile application and date of birth and four buttons. For insert, update, delete and view. How this application is going to work? So, firstly I am going to use my, use my name, mobile number, date of birth insert. So it will be inserted to the table. Like that how many de uh, details you want you can insert. So if you want to update, so here out of these three details the name is the primary key. What is that primary key means? Which uniquely identifies the data in that uh, table. For example you have a, so in your class you might be, there might be 60 members. How those 60 members will be identified? There might be two Nithins. How are you going to differentiate them? Based on the USN. So the USN will become the primary key. In the similar manner, here the name is the primary key. If you want to update the information, enter the name and update those uh, either mobile number or date of birth. So if you want to delete any particular student information, just enter the name and delete, the deletion will happen. So if you want to view, view that by clicking on this button. So we will develop an alert message, alert dialog builder, so that alert in the form of alert, so it will display the user details which are there in the database. So let's start the development. Hello all. So in this demonstration, I will be demonstrating how to create a database by creating a database helper class. So here the database that we are using is SQLite. It's a lightweight database that will be used in the mobile application development along with the room database and even you can use Firebase. So let's start the application development. So by starting the Android Studio. So here I will be demonstrating the very basic uh, SQL operations that you can apply on mobile application development using SQLite by writing the various methods. So before writing, uh, before uh, in this particular video, just I will be demonstrating how to create a helper class or database helper class. So the continuation of this video will have the complete database application. Let's create a new project by selecting the empty activity. So I will give the name as database application and finish. So to learn this particular database management in mobile application development, at least you 
must know the basics of SQL structured query language uh, so that uh, you can understand the basic operations that we are going to perform in this particular application. So in this particular video, I'm not going to demonstrate the user interface. Why? Because the continuation of this video will have the user interface and how to access the database. So just in this particular video, just I will be developing a database helper class in which by specifying the various operations that we can use or that we can apply on the database. So my application is almost ready for the development. So the synchronization of Gradle script with the project is done. So I will be developing the, the database now by creating a helper class by name database helper or db helper. So to create the db helper class, so here the main activity is there which is responsible for activating the functionality of database uh, using the user interface. I am not going to disturb this particularly in this particular video, just I am going to create a new java class. So I'm going to give the name as DB helper. So database helper class. So just observe here the database helper class has been created. Uh, so firstly, I'm going to call the DB helper by providing the context public class db helper so i'm going to extend this extends sql because we are making use of sqlite database that's why i will I'm, i will be calling sqlite helper sqlite open helper so once you call the sqlite open helper inside that you have to provide the method for the context that is public db helper so which is going to make use of context not the view it will come under android content super dot context and you have to provide the database name here that is I'm going to use the database name as user data dot database and I'm going to provide null So the name of the database is user data and the factory value will be null. It is a version number one and just observe here we are getting error. Why? Because it has not been created. So just go to the suggestions and implement the methods. So these are the two methods which are mandatory for database creation. One is create, other one is upgrade. That's what we are getting in the suggestion. Just observe. So in the suggestion, we are getting this implement methods. So we have two methods. One is create, other one is upgrade. I'm going to override this. Override. So now we have to update the details present here with respect to create and with respect to upgrade. So with respect to create, firstly, I will update. It's a simple SQLite database. So there is no need of using complete name. And in place of that, we will use DB. And next to create, firstly, we have to write the code to create the database. That is DB dot execute SQL. So we are going to create the database here. So that the parameters that should be present in the database that is create table, 
create table that is user details so make sure that you are going to give the name properly why because you have to use the same name here onwards user details the table name is user details so inside this user details we will be having three things one is name other one is tag uh, contact other one is date of birth name it is a text which is a primary key next we have contacts which is not a primary key it is a text next we have date of birth once again it is a text done so <clears throat> we have overridden two methods one is on create other one is on upgrade so in on create instead of using complete name i am changing the reference to db so here onwards we can use the term db so on that database i am executing sql by creating a table by name user details with the following parameters first one is name which is a primary key then contact and date of birth these are the three type three parameters which will be there in my database data these are the three things which i am going to read next on upgrade so i am going to change the same details here in place of using sqlite database i am going to use the reference as db next int hold version this is hold version int i1 is equal to new version so on upgrade means if the table exists so we are going to drop this drop means it's nothing but to we are going to delete the table if it is already exist so i'm going to call db dot execute sql so i'm going to write that drop table table if exists what's the table name user details so make sure that you are going to use the same name so this is my database name table name that is user details the database name is user data which is having three things name contact and date of birth out of those three the name is the primary key so on upgrade so in database with respect to old version or new version so if the table is exist drop the table user details drop table if the user data table exists so now from here onwards i'm going to write one two three four methods first method is to insert the user data well, because this is the four these are the four basic operations that we are going to apply first one is to insert the user data second one is to update the user data third one is to delete the user data in the table fourth one is to get the data so firstly i'm going to write the method for inserting the user detail so we are done with creation and we are done with upgrade so now we are going to write a method to insert the user de detail boolean insert user data so i am going to insert three things which are there in the table one is name other one is contact other one is date of birth all these three details are string that's what i'm going to pass here string name string contact string date of birth insert user data what we are inserting name contact and date of birth so where we are inserting it 
we are inserting it into SQLite database. SQLite database. SQLite database. So the name of the data, the reference that we are going to use is DB is equal to this database which we are referring is get writable database. Means you can write the contents which are there in that table. So what is DB? It is SQLite database which is writable. So what we are writing there? Name, contact and data. So next, after declaring, after accessing the database, firstly, I will access the content values, content values is equal to new content values. Why? Because we are planning to insert the content values here. So next, so in this content values, the contents that we are planning to push to the database is name, contact and date of birth. This content value should be referred. So content values dot put. Why? Because we have to insert put. Firstly, we have to put the name. That's the key, primary key, which is which can be referred in the form of name. Next content values dot put we are going to put the contact in the form of contact next content values dot put we are going to put the date of birth that is referred as dot is that clear we have referred database and the content value class instance has been created and the contents are name, contact and date of birth. So now we have to insert these three content values to the uh, database. So if for that I will use a variable called result, I will check whether the insertion has been done successfully or not by calling a method insert which is inbuilt method db.insert to which day table name user details that's why i told you to make sure that you are using the proper table name proper table name so which is null for which you are going to insert the content values and i'm storing the result with the variable result so that's what i'm going to check here after calling insertion if the result is equal to minus 1 means failure. I am going to return, I am going to return false. Else, I am going to return true. That's it. It's a very simple method. What we are doing here is we are inserting the data to the database. Firstly, I will refer the database using the variable. Next, I will create an instance of content values. Then I will read the content values such as name, contact and date of birth. And I will call insert method on the table name. If the result is minus one, the insertion has not been happened. If the result is other than minus one, then the result is the insertion has been successfully done. That's all about the insertion of data to the database by name user details. Next, public, we are going to write a method for update the user details boolean update user data. What we have to update? Once again, we have to mention the data that we are referring firstly name next string contact next string date of birth so here once again i need to call the database that is sqlite database the reference that we are using is db is equal to this keyword to remove the ambiguity get writable database 
Next, I need to refer once again the content values is equal to new content values. Next, so I need to replace, why because which one is the primary key present here? The primary key as per the definition, the primary key is the name. So that will not be replayed, updated. In place of name, based on the name, we are going to update the contact and uh, date of birth. That's what's the content values that I'm going to get from the new data. Content value dot put. So I'm going to update two things. One is contact. You can update our. You can update the content value of dot put. You can update date of birth. These are the two things you can update. So here we have to select the particular detail or data. So for which the updation should be done for that we are going to use the cursor and we are going to call the query. So based on that query, we are going to find that with that particular tuple and in, what, in that particular row, we are going to update the details. So I'm going to create a cursor. Cursor is equal to database dot raw query. So I will write the query here. Select, select star. Star means all from the table name that is user details where where name is equal to question mark so the name that is that you have query name so i'm going to write this in the new word why because it has become lengthy new string so select the all from the table name where the given name is present so i am calling query and the cursor will point to that particular name if that particular name exists. So next, if the cursor returns the result, if you get that count, cursor, cursor dot get count, if the cursor count is greater than zero, is greater than zero if the cursor count means the result of this query is greater than zero means I have, we have got the details in that given name so i will call the update operation and the result will be once again stored in the form of long long result is equal to db I will call inbuilt method update. So where I need to pass the table name that is user details. Then I need to pass the content values. Then I need to pass the name for which the updation should be done. And new string clear so i'm calling method update on user detail so where the content values will be updated based on the where the content values will be updated based on the user details
based on the user details. The content values will be updated based on the name that you are going to give. So next, if while calling the update, if the result is equal to minus one, that is fail. So we are going to return false. I'm going to return false. Else, else, I'm going to return, return true. So with this, with respect to if, okay. So even if the count is not found, for that also, I'm going to return false. If the search, we are going to search. If it is found, so if you if you are going to saw the uh, call the query and that will be pointed by the cursor. If it is found, you are going to update that result. So if the update has not happened means false. Update has done means true. If the count itself is not given means then also the updation is not possible means the name that you are searching is not available in the database. This is about the updation. This is how you are going to update the data present in the database by using update user data. So we will call the database. So where we are updating the content values. So the two things that you are going to that you can update is name and database. The search of that particular user details will be based on the name. If the cursor count is greater than zero, then you have that particular user detail then you call update method on it if the update is not successful return minus one if the update is successful then return true even if the particular detail itself is not present also then you are going to return false so the next method is to delete the data public boolean boolean delete data so here the deletion for that deletion you it's not required to pass all three uh, parameters name and contact number and date of birth just the primary key is enough that is string name so for delete method if this is more than enough so in delete firstly I will call the SQLite database SQLite database, the references DB is equal to this dot get writable database. So then to delete that particular user information, once again, we need to call the cursor. Cursor reference is equal to database rock where have you have done in the update details so where we have to write the query select star from table name that is user details user details where where so the very difficult part of this particular database application is even if you make mistake while mentioning the user table name or the table name in the query, you will not get any error, but the thing that particular operation will not happen. Where name is equal to the query that you are, the name that you are giving, which you want to delete new string that name that you are provided. So place the cursor based on the select all the details from the user details means table where the name is equal to the name that the user has given for the deletion and point cursor to that particular uh, user information. So next once it has been pointed once again I'm going to take the count if if cursor dot get count is greater than zero the count of the cursor means it is pointing to the information is greater than zero then 
So we will call the result to check whether the deletion can be done or not. Deletion on db dot delete. So where what from which table we are deleting? That is user details. So based on what we are deleting? We are deleting based on the name. Name. The user has given so here the name plays an important role why because the updation or deletion will happen based on the name why because this is the primary key that we are using so we are calling the delete operation from the table where the name is the username and we will delete that if the cursor count is greater than zero in that name if it is equal to zero means that particular name is not available the deletion cannot be done that's what i'm going to place if the result is equal to minus one failure of deletion that is return false else return true that particular thing has been to information has been deleted if the count, just observe, this is the corresponding if, this is the closing syntax. If the count itself is zero means you cannot delete. That's why I'm going to space another once else block that where I'm going to return false. This is about the deletion of a particular tuple or instance in a database. Delete data, we are calling the SQLite database by name DB, which is writable. I am calling cursor by query to select the particular user information based on the name. If the count is greater than zero, there's information with that username. So we will call delete operation on that name. If the deletion is, if the result of the deletion is minus one, then failure, we, it's not possible to delete. If the re result of the deletion is other than minus one, then the successfully deleted. So if the count itself is equal to zero, then false. It's not that particular user information. It's not there to delete. So next, the last one that is data to get the data. So we are done with insert, update and delete. The last one is get the data. Whenever you call data to be retrieved, we are going to execute this method that is public cursor. We are going to call cursor, point the cursor to get data. So in which SQLite database you are waiting? It's a SQLite database by name db is equal to this dot get writable SQ database. Then place the cursor to fetch the information of the data that is present in the database dot raw query select select star from table name that is user details and initially it will be null arguments will be null finally return cursor done to get the data get the data means we are not specifically getting the data of any particular user instead of that we are collecting the data of all the users which are there who are there in that particular database for that call the database that is writable database place the cursor for all the details which are there in the uh, particular table and return the cursor value this is with respect to get with respect to delete so the deletion will happen based on the the deletion will happen based on the uh, name so in sqlite database the deletion will happen based on the name so we are going to select the cursor based on the name and if the count is greater than zero then there's a possibility of deleting the value you can delete that value 
if the while deleting if the result is minus 1 means there is a failure else return true if the count itself is zero means after querying for the deletion then return false that there is no such details is present to delete coming to the update update so it the update will be done based on the name the values that can be updated is contact or date of birth so firstly call the sqlite database then get the contents such as name and date of birth and contact call the query and the name which you want to update if the cursor count is greater than 0 then call the update method if the result is minus 1 if it has not been updated else if the result is other than minus 1 it is true we have updated if the count while calling the query if the count itself is equal to 0 means it is failure no such user detail is present in the table coming to the insert data the insertion will happen so we are going to insert name contact and date of birth firstly call the database and create a content values instance and read the contents such as name contact and date of birth and try to insert it by calling the insert method if the result is minus one failure it has not been inserted else true it has been inserted so coming to the two primary methods that is on create so you have we are we are creating a table by name user details by providing the primary key details and other parameters that we that will be the part of the table such as name contact and date of birth coming to on upgrade if the table name is already exists just drop it so dba helper class is a class that serves as any core logic whenever you are working with the database application so database application creation requires database usage requires this kind of dba class unless until you have this kind of dba class you cannot work with the database you have to mention the methods which are required to manipulate the data or insert the data or delete the data or drop the table so that such details should be placed inside this helper class this helper class can be used will be used in the uh, main activity where the application will be present along with the design. So writing the database is, is no, uh, there is no need of uh, doing any design part. Why? Because it's a backend process where we will be creating a database. We will be uh, inserting the data. We will, we will be writing a method to insert the data where we will be writing a method to manipulate the data where we will be writing a method to delete and where along with that we are going to write a simple method to get the data so just observe before moving to the next video firstly i will execute this and i will show how the database will be created by using this database inspector feature so if the database has been created successfully means then we can proceed further with the continuation of this application for the development of simple database application we can use the same helper class if the database has been created then you can see the, the database in this database inspector inspector feature just i'm going to execute this let's see whether the database has been created or not so why because in this database inspector you can tree, you can see the table and you can see the features of the database so there is no errors so my program is executing successfully so probably we can see the uh, results in the database inspector data constructor is never used So you have to develop the database using API level greater than 60, 26 or higher to inspect. So you, can, you cannot inspect the database. So if you are, why? Because we are, we, we are using a database application 
uh, for the data application the api level that we have used here is uh, 21 that's why this database inspector is not working so if you change that api level to 26 or higher version then you can uh, look the database creation here so these features you can analyze Just observe here, you can observe. So, how the execution of this application has happened? So, so just observe. So, database. So, here you can see the databases. Okay, why because so the database is already there that's why we open a table to run query and inspect so this is where the database has been created you can observe the database creation by using the database inspector thank you so in this video just have developed uh, a simple database helper class which will be used in the coming up next video which same database helper class will be used in the front end with a simple application to display the user details such as name, contact number and date of birth. And we can apply the update operation, we can apply the delete operation sets uh, and we can uh, display the details present in the database using the same DBA helper class. Thank you.